And uh, let me introduce you to Claude, Claude Greisler, a co-founder of uh, Armistrom, co-owner of Ar Armistrom, all the way from Bien. How are you, Claude? Thank you, I'm good. How are you? Nice. We can hear you very well. You're looking smart, looking good, looking fresh. Perfect, thank you. Fantastic. So, Claude, how are things uh, first generally for you? And I can see that already you are well positioned to take us down the, the alley and to visit the manufacturing together, which is something really, really special uh, that we haven't done before. And I'm really excited now to, uh, uh, to carry out uh, with you. How are you, Claude? Oh, we are good. I think uh, well, the situation is the same as a few months before, but we are happy that all the team is working at the manufactory. Uh, everybody is well, so we didn't have to close. We have enough work, so we are more than happy to work every day. Absolutely. And you're always busy because uh, one of the main points and what is really special about Army Strong, we'll talk about the concert, but it's that to this day you produce uh, in-house all your timepieces, uh, except a few collaborations, of course, here and there, which we'll uh, explain later on for some of the dials some of the highly complication, the high complications, but your philosophy is about in-house production. That's why you have invested so much over the last 10 years in the premises behind you that you're going to show us. Exactly, yeah. That's uh, a bit more than 10 years now. We were able to um, invest in this uh, factory where we are based now here in Biel. And Serge and myself, we have the clear vision to become a watch uh, manufactory, to be able to um, buy brass and steel and produce watch movements out of brass and steel in the quality level, in the design wise and in the engineering that we wanted to have them. Absolutely. And so also this gives you total independence uh, in a way because we've been uh, obviously hearing we're living very, very special times Things are not easy for uh, some of the um, watch manufacturers, of course, because of the situation. But the fact that you are fully independent, you, you, you make your components, you do the, uh, the making, the finishing, the assembling uh, in-house, is it an advantage in times like this? Well, it is an advantage, definitely, yeah, because you can be more flexible. We have uh, the volume uh, is not as high as it was before. It's more spontaneous. We're working on a lot of unique pieces, a lot of demands for uh, small uh, limited editions for our customers. And on the other hand, we are lucky, very lucky to even produce and um, watch parts for other companies. So we do not provide them with movements. Movements are exclusively made for Armin Strong. But we still have uh, some companies ordering spare parts uh, from us. So this keeps us running the manufacturing even when the sales are a bit lower than, were, than they were before. So, you, yeah, you are obviously part of the ecosystem of those suppliers that are key these days to supply some of the key uh, parts of, uh, of, uh, of the watches. So exactly. nice to see you, Iqbal. Ben, uh, nice to see Gianfranco from the uh, uh, Fondation de l'Autre Rogerie, uh, although independent, of course. Uh, Gianfranco, very much connected to the Grand Prix de l'Orgerie as well. Nice to see you. Uh, nice to see you, Jay, Jay, as well. Everybody, so you know the rules. We're going to go spontaneously and casually with Claude. Uh, visiting the manufacturer is going to be fun. If you have any question, feel free to uh, interrupt. It's always, it's always nice. So... Uh, it's not always us doing the talking, although I will let Claude do most of the talking today. So let's get started, Claude. Uh, where are we at the moment? Where are you uh, at the moment? I'm... So we are at the front desk um, in our factory. So the factory actually has um, watchmaking history. The building was owned by Rolex. Um, the Rolex did some micro stamping in this building. When, the, when they... Um, we're building up the big factory in Bilbien, the big manufacturing. This company moved to their, to their production site and the, uh, the factory was empty. So we were able in 2008 to buy the building um, uh, from Rolex. So was and that, since of course. 2009, since 2009, we are um, 
everything is set it up. So the workshops downstairs, the production site, everything is now um, operationally turning since uh, 2009. So for those that are not familiar with the uh, city of Bienne, uh, I call it Bienne because I'm more like a French speaker, but of course, if you're a German speaker, it's Biel. And uh, it is actually a, a very interesting case in Europe of a totally bilingual, bilingual city at the edge between Canton de Neuchâtel and Canton uh, de Berne, uh, of, uh, Canton of Berne. And uh, of course, a very key location where the big boys are based, you know, Rolex, uh, to mention a few, uh, but the Swatch Group, of course, uh, famous, famously also uh, based in, uh, in Vienna with, the, um, with Omega. So did you find it as an advantage, the fact that your building was already used by Rolex before, so it was laid out a little bit like a, like a small manufacturing, or did you have to rework completely the, the building? No, there were a few uh, advantages because um, the, the fact that they did some micro stamping, so the, 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 the way how they built up the factory is very in a solid way, so you cannot accept uh, vibrations on CNC machines and uh, so the way they were setting up the factory was perfect to, to, uh, to put our CNC machines. So that was a huge advantage. We didn't have to invest in very uh, specific floors, so everything was already, was already uh, there. So that's, very interesting. That's nice. And Claude, if you allow me, Rolex is famous as a brand that never shows the movement of their watches. Whereas <laughs> exactly. You are actually then taking over and going completely the opposite direction because Armin Strong, master of skeletonization, as a master watchmaker, Armin Strong as a brand these days, still very attached to the idea of skeletonization and to give power to the movement itself. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but that's hard, okay. So from this, um, the first um, workshop I'm gonna show you is the R&D office. Um, the R&D office is where, we are, um, where I work myself together with two uh, engineers, Maxim and Alan. And um, what we do here, we, we actually start with um, white paper, uh, pencil, um, where we start to draw our first ideas. And then quite soon we start to work with the three-dimensional uh, uh, software. So we have a 3D soft um, where we are able to do the whole engineering. So we are really building up every single, uh, single part. Let's say that's the gravity equal force, so our latest yep. uh, um, model. Yep. And we do, we do develop all parts uh, with this three-dimensional software. So dial, hands, every single wheel. Is made, is made out of this uh, software. So we really have to engineer the profile of the T's, everything is engineered in this software. It's called Autodesk. It's used by, mainly used in the car industry, but yeah. um, it's also uh, in, in other industries. And on the so other hand, we have some so renderings. Yes? Yeah. yeah. So I have a first question. So you, yourself, and uh, Serge Michel are the co-owners of uh, Armistrom these days. Of course, you are very involved, both of you, uh, in the development of the brand. So your role is more on the technical side and on the uh, development, am I correct? Of course. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, my background is watchmaking. Uh, yeah. I was educated as a watchmaker. Then um, I was investing in, I uh, graduated in watch restoration in the museum uh, in La Chaux-de-Fonds, in the Watch Museum. Yeah. And then later on became even an engineer in the movement uh, watch construction, watch engineering. Yeah. So in total yeah. I spent yeah. almost seven years or eight years to, uh, to get my education uh, in watchmaking. Started at the work edge and, and, and ended up at the, uh, at the computer doing 3D things. And search background is more uh, uh, sales background, uh, marketing background. Yeah, yeah. And for you, as far as you're concerned, uh, Claude, you have an expertise in uh, highly complicated movements with your experience at Christophe Claret as well. Exactly, yeah. After yeah. my, uh, when I graduated as an engineer, my first job, I was lucky to work for uh, Christophe Claret 
I spent almost four years doing uh, movements such as tourbillons and minute repeaters uh, for Christophe Carrier. I remember those days I was a, I was a Girard Perregaux, and Girard Perregaux was purchasing the movements for the minute repeaters opera, I remember from Christophe, uh, Christophe Carrier. Yeah. So, uh, those were the days. <laughs> yeah, that was the good, uh, <laughs> that was some crazy, we did some crazy pieces for, for Girard Perregaux, that was a fun time. Yeah. Absolutely. So. The R&D office is where everything starts after the brainstorm uh, and the um, development of the ideas. So you turn ideas into feasible projects. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct, yeah. So we start by doing um, some uh, hand drawings, uh, visual drawings, and also some calculations. And then later on, we bring everything to the, uh, to the computer. So of course it's also a lot of a lot of uh, mathematics studies uh, which are involved. So we have to calculate gear trains, uh, forces, uh, and all those kind of things. But then it becomes to to modeling uh, the parts uh, in the three-dimensional uh, software. Very good. So once the project is, uh, yeah, I can see Amr is co is connected as well, and I take the opportunity to congratulate both Armstrong and the Eurofile for the fantastic gravity equal force uh, unique piece that you just uh, <laughs> you just uh, announced yesterday. Very jealous because it's obviously a unique piece, so it is one that I will see when I meet Amr again in the flesh. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. This is an amazing piece. Absolutely, absolutely. So this is the first station, Claude, where you can also start working on real personalization because you have the ability there to take all the factors, all the elements, put them together and create different, yeah, different scenarios. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Very so good. normally once the movement is made, what we do, we do normally, we, we keep the movement as it is, but we can move further with different decoration, different platings, different color, color options and cases, wraps and things like this. Really? So, it's, really? so we, we have even done movements specific for a client, let's say a unique piece, which was very uh, specific. The movement was built just once for a client, but that was the most extreme thing we have ever done. And most of the time, it more becomes about different finishings, uh, on main plates or uh, color giving on bridges and uh, uh, yeah, really things like this. Yeah. So without, without giving too much uh, away, and yes, the Oster as well, limited edition, was a beautiful piece that has been a, a great success. But also the limited edition is working, we're working on our own personalized uh, piece in collaboration with Combo Piece, and it should come pretty soon, we hope. So, uh, Claude, we have a lot of comments uh, uh, from very, very engaged audience today, which is really good. So the Orophile, Amr, is saying that you are a very patient man, I have no doubt, because I... <laughs> I could, I could, uh, I could actually appreciate that as well. Uh, Charles is, was asking for the purple version of the gravity equal force. There was already a purple version with a purple dial, but of course, Amr worked amazingly on the sub dial, which is, uh, yeah. which is the fantastic thing to personalize on the gravity equal force. Then normal sinus rhythm is saying the gravity equal force is, in my opinion, one of the best value watches in the world, and uh, we can only. We, we can only uh, agree we retail that watch at 13,000 uh, pounds with our VAT in the UK, and it's a fully in-house uh, manufactured caliber that gives equal force as well as a special yeah. feature, so something really, really, really strong. It's, so, first of all, yeah. it's fully manufactured. It's, that's what we're going to see later, how we do the parts. It's fully yeah. hand-decorated. And even the engineering approach is very unique in the gravity equal because that's something which was never done before, having a barrel delivering an equal force combined with an automatic winding system. So Absolutely. That's a bit the approach, you know, when you, when you grow as a manufacturer at the beginning, you have to prove that you are able to do, let's say, the standard movements. But since we, uh, since we were able to improve in resonance in 2016, where we launched our resonance and we saw that we really can push existing complications further, this, I think, completely changed the mind of the company. Instead of just doing watches, it's also we're going to improve uh, 
uh, watches. And that's thanks to the whole manufacturing, the whole team, everything, every people, uh, everyone who is working here is fully motivated. And it's thanks to this team, the spirit of the team makes us today um, pushing the product uh, as far as we can. Absolutely, absolutely. And as you, as we move on to the to the next uh, to the next uh, yes. uh, station, I um, I uh, also Amr is pointing out a very important element, which is the finishing, which which will uh, we we'll see later on. Uh, you know, yeah. the finishing uh, techniques like tremblage, uh, um, beveling, uh, perlage, uh, Geneva stripes, uh, all all um, handled in house, which is a, a, a very very uh, big uh, big plus. So yeah, so where are we going now? Close. So we are going downstairs uh, to the uh, fabrication. Um, so it's a bit noisy in there, but Thierry is behind the camera and he will give me a sign as if I do not understand you. So we maybe have to figure out how we can communicate. Uh, okay. But I try to speak very loud that you should hear what I'm, what I'm telling. Very good. So we are live with Amish from from uh, BN, BL, uh, the uh, in-house manufacturing, and we have uh, come to the first station, the uh, uh, R&D department, where Claude is very active, and we are now at the second station, which is Claude. So we are here in the, what we call, this is the mechanical part of the, of the, of the workshop, this is where even the watchmakers, or Alan, Alan is one of our uh, engineers. He's doing some measurements on the move. Hi, Alan. And uh, so everybody is, uh, is using those machines because they are not computer controlled. And every watchmaker or people working in decoration, they can handle, they can handle those machines. They can adjust their, uh, their tools. They can make their posage for decoration. And uh, so that's more like the general mechanical uh, part of the workshop. And then downstairs, we have uh, two turning machines. We have a uh, wire erosion, we have a CNC milling machine, and we have even a machine uh, with cutting uh, the gear train. But let's have uh, maybe a closer look. So turning. machines. This machine is called the turning machine and the other one, this, those machines we use for uh, wheels, uh, axes, uh, screws, all parts which are made out of round material. So that's the material we buy from a supplier. It can be brass or, uh, or stainless steel or regular steel. And then the raw material is in the machine and then we have the working part where we have different tools to cut out all kinds of, uh, of uh, different parts. Yeah, because we, um, we forget sometimes when we talk about in-house manufacturing, we talk about movement, but manufacturing a movement means going to the tiniest little component like even a screw. And all, even the screws are made in house. Yeah. So, turning for all the round parts. And then we have uh, one extra operation is, uh, is gear train cutting. This machine we use only to cut out the teeth, the shape of the teeth. That's something which has to be very precise. So the machine yeah. we use only for gear train cutting. Unbelievable. And then every single gear is finished, of course, by hand. Amazing. Amazing. Milling. Milling is used, so when yeah. we get the raw material, brass or steel, 
where we do all the main plates, the bridges, the micro rotors, the small parts for the hand setting system, and so everything which is not produced out of round material is made with our uh, CNC. We can see the cutting process there was with the liquid used to uh, control the temperature and the overheating uh, of the point itself. Very good. We can we can see. I hope you guys are seeing this and uh, you can hear fine. I am trying to talk not too much to let you appreciate as much as possible clothes direct explanations. And here we have an example. So the last machine is the wire is the wire cutting machine. A wire who is cutting out the shape of uh, of the parts, and that's uh, that's for a new that's a project which will be launched in uh, two weeks. Huh? That will be an auto a watch which is based on an automatic winding system, a new piece um, where we have milled out the shape of the of the rotor, and then finally cut out with the wire and then very clear I just want to make a check if we can still hear Claude yeah. Claude can you can you talk now? Moving to the third station now, after the CNC and the machines to cut out the main components of the movement of the gear train and uh, all the way to the tiny, tiny screws. Claude, can you still hear me? And can we check if I can still hear you? Now I can hear you again because it was too noisy next to the CNC machines. Perfect. Now it's okay. I mean, you're Don't worry. It was really. I think it was really clear, and I. I think everyone has been able to understand. Uh, that the, the previous station we saw the CNC machines and all the machines dedicated to the milling and the shaping of the main components uh, of the movement uh, from the, the bigger components, the rotors, all the way to the small screws. Yeah, exactly. Fantastic. And the thing is, it's, it's the, the noise comes from the, you know, the cutting tools. They have to, sometimes we, we, we are working on diameters, 0.3 millimeters, all. The, the, the cutting tools, they need a very high speed, so they have to yep. speed up at 30 or 40,000 turns a minute. This is why it's so noisy. It's not extremely loud, but it's very noisy because the, the tools they turn on such a high speed. And this makes yep. the whole workshop a bit noisy, so it's just, that's Absolutely. the reason why I really understand. Absolutely. And okay, also, we wanted, to do, we wanted to do the visit at this time because at this time, uh, obviously, the watchmakers are still working, so we can see people, you know, yeah. things happening as they happen. Yeah, it's just uh, we are very unlucky because one of our mechanics he just uh, had an accident uh, yesterday, and he's in the hospital today. So we are. Oh really? Sorry to hear that. Is he okay? Uh, well, we hope. I have no, no news. So I hope this will have some problem with this back. So we will see. Okay, well, please let us know when you know, because... Uh... And the, the thing is, we are a very small team, we are 20 people involved in the manufacturing, and as soon as somebody is missing, it's always a bit... Uh, first of all, it's like a family. Um, yeah. It's like uh, when your brother or, or your sister has an accident, if somebody has an accident. But then it's yeah, also... Uh, Every, everyone is concerned. Yeah. Of course. Of course. So now we have, uh, so first workshop was R&D, where we have the ideas, where we do the engineering. Then we send the drawings and the three-dimensional parts downstairs. They do produce the part out of the CNC machines. So watchmakers always use machines to produce the parts. Huh? There's some yeah. either CNC control or hand control machines. And then it becomes to, and the most uh, passionate part is uh, decoration. 
This is where we have the raw main plate, the raw bridge is uh, coming to the workshop, and the ladies do the, the, the decoration. And of course, uh, Claude, correct me if I'm wrong, but being Armstrong's concept all about skeletonization, the, the decoration of the movement and every single element is really the key for, for your uh, identity, really. Yeah, of course. Yeah, this, is, this belongs to the philosophy of Mr. Armstrong. When he started to skeletonize the watches, he had the vision to, to uh, expose the movement, and you really have to work on the movement for all kinds of, of, of decoration to make the movement as, as nice as possible. Absolutely. And here we have yeah. Pauline. Pauline is working on uh, um, barrel bridges and um, from the gravity equal force. And what she's done, so the... I have, the, I have Pauline the, here as well. I have Pauline here as well in a different outfit. Yeah. <laughs> So she's, what she's doing, so the, the, the bridge was cut out, same as the, the road we have seen before, was cut out by wire erosion. And now what she's doing, she is um, grinding the side of the bridge, something which is not very, very visible, but the whole part has to be as perfect as, as it gets. So even parts which are almost invisible or invisible, they get a perfect uh, decoration by hand. Perfect. And this everybody who's involved in the in decoration, they are all trained watchmakers yeah. or engravers. And um, yeah. So they know exactly the how one. much how much they are uh, they can remove, how much they have to polish. So their knowledge, they have a huge knowledge in uh, in watchmaking. Which Pauline is very helpful. On the first stage of decoration, uh, what uh, Paul, Pauline's is is working on at the moment. This is a first stage of uh, uh, decoration. Yeah, it's one of the first steps. And yeah. then we do, uh, as soon as the sides are made, we start to do uh, the perlage, so spotting, uh, Geneva stripes, or even uh, then uh, the ombrage, polishing the bevels or hand yeah. so all kinds of of, of, of uh, decorations are, are made in this uh, work. What would you say is, uh, uh, how can I say, the iconic Armstrong uh, decoration? Uh, would you say it's tremblage, tremblage, or are you particularly proud of the beveling? Are you particularly proud of which uh, decoration that is becoming, in the eyes of collectors now, a little bit the image of Armstrong? No. So, tromblage is a kind of hand decoration, and hand, it's a modern way of hand decoration, because the tromblage is every spot is made, uh, is made by hand. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I would say hand engravings were always very important uh, for the workshop. Yeah. Somehow it's a signature, it's a signature decoration, the, the hand engraving, what we do. Yeah. And all the ladies that you have... We have our own way of doing Geneva stripes uh, because yeah. everybody tries to have the, 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 their best technique and we use, everybody's using a, bit, a different technique even in, in polishing the bevels or... Um, but I would say, well, tromblage, you can say today, is the modern art of, of, of our hand yeah. engraving. Yeah, yeah. For the two questions, Claude, uh, we have two questions. One is, are all the ladies uh, in the finish, in the decorating department interchangeable between the different techniques, or everyone is specialized in one? And also, what are your favorite Geneva stripes? So, um, first question, um, normally they do, what we do is like one, uh, person is working on one piece. That means, um, let's say, for example, the, um, the barrel bridge. Uh, Pauline has to start with, uh, with, with doing the grinding on the sides, and then she does the, uh, the hand polishing, she does the Geneva stripes, the bandage, and everything. So she's, everybody's doing everything in this workshop. That's great, that's great. And uh, your favorite Geneva stripes that you've seen, you felt that is a bit the model you have in mind to, to, to achieve the best quality? I think the best quality is if you, for me, 
it's our Geneva strap is almost it is for me in my opinion it's a perfect Geneva strap because it's very sharp in between each line we have a very sharp line and for me that's a signature uh, the most important thing is that we have really sharp lines uh, on the Geneva strap and this there we have therefore we have a special technique how we do it's not something we do by grinding it's something we do by by cutting and um, so something we have figured out after more than 10 years of doing Geneva strike, which is the, yeah. the, the most perfect way of doing, of doing them. Of course, of course. Is there any other station that you, we can see uh, as the decoration is happening? Yes, you can we go and see what uh, Lisiane is doing. She's doing, uh, she's preparing the bevels uh, to be polished. Which, so the which bevel, language? The which language? Language? Sorry. So she's preparing the bevels uh, to be polished at the end. So yeah, polishing is like getting finer, finer, finer with your with your uh, sandpaper. Now she, the sandpaper is all is three microns. What she's using? That's something she's using before, just before polishing. So we have this. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. And so she's preparing the edges just before the final, uh, the final polishing. Very good. Very good. So, do you have a set time for every phase of the decoration, or you leave the ladies take all their time for them to understand, you know, to be to be free to assess when is. You know the piece is good enough to move on in the production uh, uh, the production process. Um, that's, I think that's because they are all you know decoration is like an artwork and sometimes it's not every day is the same that they're not every day in the same mood and polishing is like a philosophy Geneva straps is a philosophy and sometimes it takes. A, a bit more time. Sometimes it takes a bit less time. Um, there's no for us. There's no rush in in, in in time. So it's the result which counts. And if they need more time to do it, we give them the time to do uh, to, to take a bit more time to do the polishing or the beveling or whatever. As much time as they need, they get to get. It's okay. it's really the result which counts uh, for Armstrong. And it's a bit a mix. There's some of them are a bit faster, the other one is maybe a bit slower, but it doesn't care, so it's really the, 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 the final result which is, which is important. Do you feel that one of the reasons of the success you're having is the level uh, of thoroughness that you have in the decoration department, even over the horological sophistication? Uh, what do you think is the icing on the cake at the moment at Armstrong? The decoration department, which is uncompromising, as you said, or uh, more so the orological development, so the R and D and the technological, the technologies that you are, you have introduced with the resonance, with the gravity equal force, with the dual time, which we're seeing here uh, in the picture. I think it's a mix of everything because, as I mentioned at the beginning, the, the company is a family and we eat uh, lunch together, we have discussions together, we have our coffee together and even during coffee break we talk about decoration, we talk about engineering, we talk about the, 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 the ladies who are doing decoration, they are trained watchmakers and they do their polishing and they, they spend so much time on every single part. Sorry. From, Sorry, from coach. Okay, this, now, now we can, can you repeat just the very last part, because uh, I think there was okay. a, a finger on the mic, <laughs> I think. Ah, okay, that was uh, no, no problem. So, as I mentioned, it is, uh, Armstrong is the family who makes a difference. It's from R&D to the guys who do the parts on the machine, decoration, so it's a whole, it's a whole spirit uh, which is visible in the watch. It's not just about decorations, it's not just about engineering, it's everything, every single people which is involved in the process who makes the difference, I think. Team spirit is very high, it's a very young dynamic team at Armstrong and everybody tries to push the limit um, uh, of watchmaking.
And as I mentioned, you know, we have coffee break together, we have uh, a lunch break together, and it's all about watches. So people, they don't come to earn money, they come to work because they love what they do. And that, that's a huge difference from um, to, to compared to, to what I have myself uh, seen at other companies. So the motivation of the team, and that's also success after, after 10 years, I think, that we have, uh, you know, it's a, it's a short time of being a manufacturer, but after sh this short time we have improved uh, on resonance, we have improved on equal force, in decoration, and uh, yeah, team. It's all about the team. It's not one so single person, it's a whole team. You're talking about the team, Claude. How proud are they that you've been shortlisted in the finals for the final, uh, you know, final celebration at the Grand Prix de l'Orgerie in Geneva, which is the most important prize in watchmaking, in two categories with two different timepieces. So what's, how's the spirit at the moment within the team? It's really good. I mean, this is something when you spend so much time on, 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 on different watches, uh, I think that's a, that's a very cool situation for the team to be to have two watches in the Grand Prix. It's very unique. We had watches before, but to, to have two watches, that's something uh, which is new uh, for us. Yeah. And that makes everybody is really proud of it because yeah, this is somehow it's the Grand Prix. That's like the Oscar of the, of the watch industry. And to be nominated, that's all, already a big success for, for a small company next to, to big companies. Fantastic. So after the, um, the shaping of the, of the components, the finishing of the components and the decoration, next step is? We do uh, galvanic treatments, yeah. color gimmicking. So most of our um, main plates, bridges and wheels, they are made out of brass and brass would oxidate in, a, in, a, in, a, in the watch. So first of all, we have to cover the brass uh, from oxidation, and then it's also color giving. So that means we have different colors that we can apply. We have a uh, very basic color is nickel, and then we have gold, yellow gold, we have rose gold, we have rhodium, and we have britannium. So we have all those different colors which we are able to, to apply. And the decision, the reason why we do it in-house, it's a quality reason. Because when you have to send, you know, imagine you spend five, six or seven hours doing a perfect main plate. Everything is perfect. The spotting, the polishing, the grinding, everything is, is perfectly made. But then you have to send the part out to a supplier. And you, you, unfortunately, the suppliers are not used to handle high level parts, so that just the, the way how they, they do their galvanic treatment is not the same way we do our decoration. And then it was always a bit disappointed when the parts came back, they have wind scratches, and uh, so it was a bit a nightmare to handle, and then we said, okay, let's invest in our own galvanic uh, kitchen, that we can even handle the galvanic treatments to have a better quality at the end. It's, again, the movement is physical, you know, if you work with the dial and you have a small scratch on the main plate, nobody cares. The dial, the hands, that's the most important part. The movement has to work, the movement has to be there, but the movement is not as uh, exposed as, as our watches. And if you have just have one small single scratch or one screw which is not perfectly polished, you will straight away, you will recognize that there's a small mistake in the part. And that's something we cannot accept the diamond throne. So every single part has to be perfectly made. And that's the reason why we do our galvanic treatments. And it's also for the end consumer, we are much more reactive, you know. If we have to change a color or if there is special demand, we can, in a week or in a, in a few days, we can, we, can change, uh, we can change color of parts or produce a part and then put it in the right pass to have the, the right watch uh, assembled uh, at the uh, at the end. And that's the, that's the secret of uh, independence again, when you want to propose personalizations to your clients, uh, that's an important part of it. And now, last workshop, 
is uh, where our watchmakers work. Huh? Yeah. So we have um, Lucas working on now on some pre-assemblies. What G is doing so. Pre-assembly is something we do in small series because we need special tools. Huh? Here he's doing um, the friction of the minute hand to the central wheel. Okay. And um, so he needs special tools, something we build in-house. And then yeah. to, to, yeah. that's something which you don't take out for one move. But that's something you have to take out for 10, 20 or 40 uh, pieces. It doesn't make sense to take it out every single, uh, for every single movement. So this is why we do the pre-assemblings. That's the wheel which is used in every single watch. And then um, it will be assembled uh, in the kit. So the, the tooling is another main, uh, main uh, important point. Because uh, when, of, of course, you do everything by yourself, the tooling becomes a massive part of your ability to shape things the way you need things to be shaped. And as a small as a small manufacturer, we have to make uh, 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 yeah somehow we have to handle uh, pre-assemblings because we want to use uh, the let's say the winding chain, the winding mechanism, the hand checking, hand checking mechanism, almost on every watch the same to guarantee yeah. a good quality. And um, yeah, this is why we have some standard parts, and then we have some parts which are specific for each uh, for each movement. Fantastic. So in there we can, we can see the resonance resonance movement. Yeah. Is it going to be uh, tested or is it quality control? Uh, what's the stage there with that with that um, uh, movement? That's something I have to ask. It's just a perfect time for uh, yeah. It's testing. So they testing. set up the uh, the resonance uh, in between the two balance wheels and the the clutch. So it's final assemble, and it's just an adjustment. Uh, you know, resonance really is quite problem. hard to adjust really because you have, you imagine you have to adjust two movements. First of all, yeah. you have to adjust one movement, then the other movement, and then you have to adjust, to adjust them with the resonance uh, clutch spring. Yeah, hoping that the clutch will do its job because, of course, the clutch is a very important part that you have introduced to increase the accuracy of the system of uh, resonance. Uh, clutch, yeah. uh, the clutch linking the two uh, balance wheels was something that was not was not yeah. uh, seen before. Yeah, we call it the, actually in physics, it's called the third oscillator. It's thanks to the yeah. third oscillator, the third frequency, we are able to connect the two, uh, the two balance wheels. But that's, uh, becoming, yeah, becoming, yeah. that's our invention. This is where we have, uh, Absolutely. this is where we could improve uh, resonance. Absolutely. I'm becoming a bit of an expert because of all the, uh, debates that we've been hearing about resonance and what is resonance and how resonance should be treated and uh, it is amazing now to see it live and uh, we could see the clutch system very well so the third oscillator very well in your, in your video here so thank you for that and here we have um I put the light. The light has a frequency. I think it's not too good to see. Okay. So this is a um, this are two gravity equal force. Yeah. Here, which are uh, pre-assembled. Yeah. So we have the main plate. We already have the barrel in place. Here we already have the the balance wheel, which is uh, shaking. I don't know if it's adjusting. It's not adjusted, but so it's somehow it's in a stage between. Um, pre-assembling and final uh, assembly. Most of the okay. parts are pre-assembled, and now they put everything together to, to make the movement uh, run. Very good, very good. It's nice to see the explosion of the different uh, components uh, before the plate is then served to the watchmaker that will have all his, all his elements, all his uh, components in front of him to then proceed to the final assemb assembly. Assembling. At what time do watchmakers start to work, uh, Claude, in the morning? Sorry? 
And what time do the watchmakers start to work in the morning? Oh, that's a bit that's different. One of them is starting very early, the other one <laughs> a bit later, let's say. Yeah. Between yeah. seven, six thirty and eight thirty. Yeah, okay. So it's fair to say that by this time the eyes are quite uh, quite tired. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can see very well. Thank you for this. Really good. This is also a uh, testing or are we on an assembling line here? Testing. Um, setting up the balance wheel, the frequency, uh, just checking the amplitude and uh, what we call the réglage in French. Réglage. Réglage. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Interesting. How many watchmakers are working there at the moment in the, in the room? Now it's two. Two, now it's two. Yeah. Fantastic. So after that would be the last, the last station and that includes the quality control as well. Quality control is actually Misael Bizel is uh, his uh, day off today, and this okay. is his workshop. He's, he's in charge of the. He's doing all the logistics side for the company. He's doing the counting part, quality control in-house, quality control from external parts, and final quality control of the of the watches. And something he's in charge. Uh, uh, yeah. Dealing with our suppliers, we have to buy uh, rubies, so the jewels are um, uh, delivered by suppliers. We have uh, mainsprings, uh, hairsprings, uh, some of the dials which are from made, the cases from suppliers. So he's handling all those uh, uh, relationships with our uh, suppliers. So, Amar, you, haven't, you have missed a lot because we've just disclosed all the secrets about the uh, Horophile unique piece, uh, Gravity Equal Force. So to catch up on that, you'll have to re-watch the whole of the uh, broadcast. <laughs> but you are excused. If it was for a shower, you're excused. Uh, you're excused. Uh, Claude, I was going to ask you, so uh, you're, a, you're a fully integrated manufacturer. <laughs> Uh, there are some exceptions on the uh, to the rule of producing everything in house. So you work with valuable suppliers for the cases for some complications, like for example the the minute repeaters, and yeah. uh, for some of the dials as well. With uh, uh, it's famous your collaboration with Comblemin and Cariguti line. Exactly. Yeah. Most of our dials are made with uh, Comblemin. Yep. We had yep. a supplier for hands, but now since almost two years, we all the hands are produced in-house. Um, that's also a quality reason, which was, was very difficult for a small brand, for a low um, volume to get uh, good quality hands. And hands for me, in my opinion, is very important. And um, so the reason, this is the reason why we do them in-house now. So all the hands are uh, produced in-house and then decorated, polished, uh, polished by hand. Fantastic. And then we have case factories, of course. We have several case factories, um, which we do work uh, together. It depends a bit on material, case size, what type of case. And uh, so therefore we have different suppliers. Yeah. But there are a lot of yeah. small, companies just next to me in the Jura. Uh, the, therefore, you have quite a big choice of working with independent family-owned uh, suppliers. So uh, case factories is something which is quite, well, let's say, easy to, to get. Fantastic. So I think Amar picked up his uh, Orofi unique piece yesterday or the day before. So unfortunately, it's not going to be on your plate now, I suppose. So what can you, can you show us? Uh, out of the best-selling line, the Gravity Equal Force, which I want to remind is um, a patented special system developed by Army Strom to supply equal force to the balance wheel, uh, from the balance wheel to the gear train for the uh, optimum accuracy, um, uh, Claude. And this has become your best-seller straight away. 
Yeah, next to Resonance, it's our best seller. Yeah. Resonance yeah. is still very strong. Uh, it's, Resonance is very important for the company um, because we are the one of the only brand uh, providing resonance and there's so much advantages in, in chronometry. So, and it's a very cool complication. And um, the gravity eco force, yes. Um, it's a new size for the company, so it's a bit smaller. It's yeah. uh, based on a, on a smaller diameter. Um, yeah. But so it's, uh, it's in chronometrical terms, both the resonance and the gravity equal force have given clear advantages, no? Improvements on accuracy. Yeah. Yeah. That's One of them is uh, delivering an equal force. So yeah. it's all about how accurate the, 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 the balance wheels can hold the frequency. If you, if you have a very stable energy going to the gear train and holding a stable frequency on the balance wheel, or you have two movements which to help each other holding uh, a proper frequency. And frequency at the day, at the end of the day, the frequency is the time, the time, the time keeping. You know, if we talk about the stable frequency, means that we have zero seconds in 24 hours. Yeah. Or yeah. plus one or plus two seconds. So of course you want you want your source of energy, which in a gravity equal force is a micro rotor, which is also a very, very nice sophistication, uh, complication. And that energy should come as constant to the balance wheel. So the balance wheel is able to give a, 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 you know, an accurate information to the gear train. And so the gear exactly. train can display the right time. Yeah. The problem on a, on, a, on a standard watch is that do you have, when the watch starts to run, you have a very low energy. So somehow you have to first make sure that the, bar, the, 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 the barrel gets wound up a certain amount of turns and you have enough energy to hold a stable frequency on your balance wheels. And the fact that the way how we built the barrel is that from beginning, as soon as your watch starts to, to run, you have enough energy on the on the escapement, what we call an equal force. So from start, yeah. from zero hours to seventy-two hours, you have a very small range of uh, of torque variation. Absolutely, and uh, in the set out, in the layout, of course, being masters of skeletonization, you make sure you can see the rotor at twelve o'clock, and the main barrel at six o'clock. Yeah. Uh, which is the obviously where the energy is stored after you, after it is uh, it is generated by the micro rotor. It's really really spectacular. The idea of having these symmetrical bridges is uh, only aesthetical, or does it also have um, uh, I'm going to say uh, uh, some technical advantages? No, it's aesthetic. It's uh, I think of course the. the Somehow they have to hold down the, the, the barrel, they have to hold yeah. down the micro, they have to be strong enough, they have to be shock resistant. So there is some engineering done behind these bridges. We have to guarantee that they are not, after a while, they not start to bend. But the shape is purely aesthetic. We can see them and here. The is, yeah. Very, very good. And uh, on the side of the... Uh, Complicated pieces, you have something there uh, that you can show us, the um, minute repeater resonance or the dual time. We have the dual time, which yeah. is actually my yeah. favorite masterpiece. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's my favorite masterpiece because, the, of course, the minute repeater is, is a mind-blowing movement, but the masterpiece one was completely made in-house and um, where we have two time indications um, so it can be used as a, as a travel timer. Uh, so because you can set every uh, time zone in the world. And, but the very cool thing on the back side is that we have four barrels. When you wind up, you see all the four barrels winding up at the same time. That's very good. That's so it's, a, it's called a, a, a double, double barrel movement. And we have two power reserve indications with a cone system where you can see how the cone is moving up and down and giving the power reserve indication for each movement on the, on the dial side. 
Fantastic. And the dial is also very cool because that's also a, a partnership with Gomblemin, with yeah. Kari. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so we have uh, four different types of uh, guilloche which are used on the, on the dial side. Yeah, so it's a masterpiece in engineering and a masterpiece in uh, finishing and in decoration. It's, uh, yes. it's one of those pieces that can resume the philosophy of uh, Army Stroman. Yes, yeah. DJ Ango Praia. Uh, sorry, I missed your question before. Yeah, the, the, the price range uh, starts around about $15,000. And then, of course, it goes up for these uh, incredible masterpieces, uh, beauties of engineering. Uh, to uh, any any price really, but in a, in a couple of hundred thousand as well. Uh, these pieces are produced in very very low numbers uh, yeah. as well, and uh, in very low in very uh, in very limited variations as well. Yeah. Now you, we can see the pure resonance, if I'm not wrong. That's a mirrored force. Mirror force resonance. Yeah, it's a unique piece. That's maybe why you're a bit confused because that's something maybe you haven't seen before. It's yeah. a unique piece with a <laughs> light blue, dark blue dial, guilloche yeah. dial. And there's a lot of tremblage finishing on the movement. So we have the balance yeah. wheels uh, finished with the tremblage finishing. And also the back side, we have a fully uh, hand tremblage uh, finishing on the back side. Fantastic. We can see the two barrels as well. Yeah, you can see the two barrels. And the setup is very unique. Uh, can wind it up. Yeah. Are you considering to make your own uh, mainsprings in the future, uh, Claude? Is that something you're interested in or you don't find it necessary at this stage? No, I think it's not necessary because we have a very strong uh, relationship. It's a family relationship because even my grandfather was a watchmaker. So since my grandfather, uh, my family has a very strong relationship with one of the best mainspring producers yeah. who is, um, is delivering us mainsprings. And he has such a high experience in doing mainsprings for uh, his... Yeah. To be honest, he's one of the best. He works for Badek, he works for yeah. Rolex, yeah. he has a huge experience. And uh, for us, it definitely makes sense to work with him because that's something, yeah, it's, uh, you have to have a certain knowledge to be able to, to do uh, mainspring on in, in such a high level. And we are focusing on development, on improving, on engineering, decoration, and this is, this is more the, the brand spirit. And you have to use your unfair advantages, eh? as I'm, I'm reading, you know, the, the famous book, The Unfair Advantages. Uh, and by the time you are secured with the mainspring, you can develop other pieces of engineering on the side that can be more of interest for you. You know, like, for example, the, all the work you've done on resonance uh, could have not been possible if you had invested all your time to develop a mainspring, uh, for example. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting. Listen. Claude, I can't believe it's been an hour already. I feel like, uh, uh, you know, I've been there and I was lucky enough to come before lockdown and uh, appreciate live what you have uh, shown to us today. I hope it was good content for those that have uh, loyally been tuned uh, across the whole of the broadcast. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, if you have any questions for Claude, for myself, later on, this broadcast will be available on our IGTV channel. And we'll try to put it on YouTube and to pass it also to Armin Strong because I think it's been really, really interesting and very, very instructive as well. Uh, Claude, thank you very much for your time and for your passion as well. No problem. Thank you, Pietro. Thank you for doing this. We'll, uh, we'll try maybe to do it again, maybe focusing on one, only one of the manufacturing processes so we can really go into the details because I... I find you explain it really, really well and very, you know, in a simple enough, even for people like myself, to fully get, uh, fully get the essence. So it's been really, really, uh, really good. I want to thank you, Thierry, as well, from behind the, behind the scenes. I know he's, uh, he's, he's there with you. And the whole of the Army Strong team for uh, making the brand stronger every single year. And it's clear that it's a brand that is on the rise big time. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. We will. Uh, well, we will see you. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure to have you all. Yeah.
I hope you enjoyed. I'm looking forward to do maybe another story on decorations. So time really goes fast. So it's in an hour you can, you know, I can talk for hours and hours, but maybe we Absolutely. could do more an extra thing on decoration or whatever. It would be a pleasure, definitely. Well, it's, it's not a secret that we are working on a project as well with you, with our yes. partners combo, combo piece as well. And there will be maybe another story to tell very soon. And maybe we can give some more details. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. It would be a pleasure to share the passion with you guys. Fantastic. Can I ask Thierry if we can see the manufacturer from, the, from outside now, just to finish our broadcast? Would that be possible? Yeah, of course. So, guys, this was, uh, this was Armistrom Live from uh, Vienne. So, uh, on the back of the legendary watchmaker known for his mastery of skeletonization, a thriving brand that has been very successful over the last 10 years and uh, led by this young entrepreneur, Claude Greisler and Serge Michel, to the next level because the brand is really, really been... Uh, uh, breaking boundaries in terms of engineering or spectacular watchmaking and the finest levels of decoration. Thank you so much, Claude. Thank you so much, Thierry. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. It's been an absolute uh, privilege. If you have enjoyed this, please let us know because my plan is to take you to a different watchmaker every, uh, at least every month, if not every 10 weeks. We would like to repeat this uh, because I think it's, uh, it's the, the essence of the art of the